in the first book with your work in it, the pre postmodernist. Oh right, yeah. There's a, a couple of pages with artwork from a I guess a magazine pent up. Oh yeah. Do you wanna talk a little bit about that? When I say political one's work is political, you know, it's in the widest sense of the word. You know, and obviously the feminist movement was rearing its head and things were getting out there and being said and obviously one of the first things to come under attack were the big, I wouldn't say it's pornography magazines, they were just like, you know, tits and bums magazines. They weren't even erotic, they were just pin-up mags, you know, quite innocent most of them, but not the heavy, heavy porn that you get now. So, not to say that they weren't around, but basically the magazines that were on your average grocery store shelf were like Pent Up and Wee Magazine and Playboy and all of that stuff. You know, so it was a comment about that really, you know, and a comment about the whole thing of a pin-up being always female. I mean, there weren't any men's pin-up mags at the time. Uh, there is now, of course, but at the time it would have been rare to see a naked man in a magazine, you know. Mm. But anyway, I just was mucking about, sort of trying to turn it in on itself. I didn't get too far with it, you know, obviously it was full colour and there was no way I could afford to do it anyway, so... Yeah. That kind of energy got diverted into something else, so... Did you use any, like, pop culture references in the imagery? No, I don't think so. Probably there's something there that I might have glanced at or I don't know really. I mean, I've always worked very much in isolation out here. You know, we have books and stuff, but I can honestly say I don't really know what's going on in the modern art world. Yeah. I have to make a real effort to go to a show. More often than not, I'm disappointed unless I go to a real cracker, you know, that's a classic, you know, like Picasso or something, yeah. you know. I would just use anything. I suppose there could have been some pop reference there I mean I don't know I wouldn't be aware of it if it was I'm kind of ignorant in that sense I'm more interested in the thing itself I'm not really interested in its background at that point in the mm. stage unless it's something glaringly obviously like a swastika then I'm very aware of what that means and a cross those really really iconic symbols yeah. you know I like to play about with those but you know, with the sort of like the shifting patterns of fashion and icons, that's a very different matter. A bit like that thing we were saying today, you know, that is in the anti-tea thing, you know, that graffiti. I wasn't aware that belonged to anybody. I just thought that was a clever bit of graffiti. <laughs> it's lost here. Yeah. But it must, so it means that if you, I was to have used that in a picture and somebody in America saw that, they would relate to it totally differently because they know the background of that bit of graffiti. You never quite know what you've used and how people are going to shift with it, you know, and interpret, which is interesting, you know, it's quite interesting. I like it. Yeah, I guess I was just curious because the painting of the woman being gawked at or observed in the junkyard, you know, with all the smashed up cars in the background, really reminded me of a scene from a Godard film, actually. Oh, right. Yeah. They're photos that I took, actually, so I was just combining some of my own photos. Huh. That character with the ice cream was at a local fate, you know, summer fate. Huh. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought he was great, so I thought, well, I'm going to use him, you know. And that picture of the people sitting down, that was from another fate. So it just kind of put things together, you know. Huh. <laughs> Yeah, it was pretty brilliant. <laughs> the whole lapping up of the sugar in front of him is what it's making me think. It's like, oh, wow. 